and thank you for watching this session on my 23 Things for Digital Knowledge course, Building Digital Confidence. My name is Stephanie Charlie Farley, um, I go by Charlie, and I'm an Open Education Resource Advisor at the University of Edinburgh. So back in 2016, I created our own version for the University of Edinburgh of a 23 Things course. So ours is the 23 Things for Digital Knowledge, and this is an open online self-paced course where participants are encouraged to dip in and out of the content, working through the material according to interest, time and opportunity. Using the established structure of 23 Things, the learning prompts and activities are provided in bite-sized portions with an introduction to each tool or literacy, followed by a task, additional suggested readings and resources. Participation was estimated at one to two hours of self-study per week with an emphasis on autonomy and encouraging the development of a regular learning habit. So this course, I designed it um, specifically towards three levels of participation. So for those who are curious and also other educators, so these are for people who are wanting to browse the course content or come back and use it at a later time, or to receive the email updates um, and use the information as part of their continued pro professional development. Then we have the dippers. Uh, these are for folks who seek to pick and choose from the course content according to their own development goals and interests. And of course, then we also have the completionists who like to work through the content from beginning to end and seek out recognition of their, com of their completion, of their achievement. The course was created with the intent of increasing digital confidence in staff and students across the University of Edinburgh, and also to be an open licensed tool available for anyone anywhere with an internet connection to use and participate in. But what is digital confidence? What does it mean? And how can it be built upon? So where does our use and need to be present in using Web 2.0 apps um, and beyond and social media fit into digital confidence and capabilities? We really needed to think about what sites, um, whether these are collaborative sites where users share information, knowledge and experience with others, apps and social media tools we're using. Um, if you're interested, uh, take a few minutes to write a list um, of the sites, app or social media tools that you are specifically using or choosing not to use. And this is really interesting because why are we choosing not to use certain sites or apps? Is it because we want more skills first? We don't trust the site or the app? Or we don't have the confidence to use that particular type of tool? These are all the things that we look at throughout the course um, and seek to answer those questions. So it's quite useful that uh, JISC, a UK service for education and research, put together a digital capability framework uh, describing the skills needed to thrive in a digital environment. And this is what was used to scaffold the tools, concepts and skills that are built upon in this 23 Things course. So as you can see, here's the full list of uh, 23 things that have been created um, for this particular course that is being run um, by us. Um, these have been built in order to scaffold and specifically hail back to uh, the first block. So I've, I've created around four focus blocks and the first block, which is scaffolded then right throughout the rest of the course, is thinking about digital footprint so the impressions um, and information we leave about ourselves online, digital security, um, diversity and accessibility. And these are looked back and brought through with all of the other tools that we look at throughout the course as well. Um, and of course, again, talking about the dippers, people who are coming in to use particular sections, you can come in and you can focus on a certain section you might be interested in. So digital awareness, social digital, digital collaboration and sharing, um, or digital play and experimentation. So the idea is there's a little bit of something for everybody in there. Participants are invited to set up and register a blog. However, they can and do work through the course without using or registering a blog if they wish. 
Um, registered blogs are also used to submit completion of the things to be eligible for an open badge, um, which can also be used as evidence for continuing professional development elsewhere. Or um, within the University of Edinburgh, it's also been used as learning evidence for certain courses and awards, such as the Edinburgh Digital Curation Award. Tagged posts um, from registered blogs can be pulled into a syndication on our 23 Things for Digital Knowledge website. And this is great because participants can then come uh, have a look at this um, community blog area and can read and share their thoughts on the course with each other. During active seasons, we also run live interactive uh, online events such as Twitter chats, where participants can chat with each other and try out various tools, concepts and skills together. They've been quite fun when we've run those. Uh, yeah, so we especially like to bring fun and play into the course as much as possible. Many folks can find technology and some tools taunting, so approaching them from fun, playful perspectives helps reduce some of those barriers. Um, and this is just a little clip of me playing around with um, augmented reality. Um, yeah, fun. Uh, not, not so daunting, not so scary. As I mentioned, on completion of all 23 things, participants can fill out a form to submit for recognition of their work in the form of a digital badge. We've had participants hailing um, across, all across the globe, including um, here in the UK, um, but also from the USA, Belgium, Canada, Sweden, Spain, Kenya, and Australia, just to name a few. It's been really interesting to see where people are um, finding and participating in this little course. In 2017-18, I actually sent a short survey out to participants, and it was fascinating to see the range of reasons folks were choosing to work through the 23 things, um, from wanting to feel more confident, um, seeing how they can adapt it for their own employment, um, and also just for a learning experience, learning about digital tools, um, and also using it towards specific um, CPD that they were putting together. So that was quite fascinating. Um, there have also been a few organisations where staff have decided to work through the course as a group. The Association for Learning Technology team here in the UK blogged about their collaborative approach um, and you can read about that um, on their blog. The fantastic images used for the course were created by our interactive content team here at the university and all of the content and images for the course have been open licensed and are available for anyone to share and to reuse. We really encourage this. And it's been great to hear from various educational groups and organizations who have used our course to go on and make their own versions. Uh, one that has had considerable impact has been the 23 Digital by the Social Services, uh, Scottish Social Services Council. They've done great work um, and even made podcasts about it. Um, and I went along and spoke to them with, about as well. It was, yeah, they've done fantastic work. I love it. Anyway, thank you. I hope you've enjoyed hearing about our version of 23 Things with the 23 Things for Digital Knowledge course. Um, I'd be really happy and interested to hear your thoughts on what we've done here at the University of Edinburgh. So again, thank you very much for your time.